Uh, so good morning everyone. So this morning we are going to have a look at our ring-tailed lemurs and then we've got Jess, one of our primate keepers here. Um, she's going to be doing her talk for you. Um, so and as you might see here, just before we start, I'm just going to have, give you a quick look at our little surprise for you. So I know a lot of people have been asking, yes we do have a baby ring-tailed lemur. So Jess, how old is this one? Uh, so it's a few weeks old. It was born on the 20th of March. Cool. So 20th of March that little one was born. So now that you all can't concentrate because of the amount of cuteness, um, Jess is going to do a little talk for you. And then once we've finished, um, we'll open up for some questions for you. So, over to you Jess. Tails with us. Uh, we have two juveniles and then six adults. So we have one male who's just down by the fence now. That is Alex. He is 13 years old. His birthday was last month on the 20th, I believe. Um, so we've got Minx down here, his mum. It's a little baby. She is six years old and she's not a first time mum. She has had babies in the past and her daughter is in the troop. She's just a little Flo over there. Flo is one years old and her birthday was on the 22nd. So with these guys, we have female dominance in the group. Um, it's like that with all lemurs. So our female in charge is Leah and she's the furthest one away with the back to the camera, enjoying her nice little pile of food. So Leah is 14 years old. Um, she does like to get everything first, so she gets first pick at food, first pick at enrichment and when the others kick off she is the one to put them in place and keep peace in the troop. As you can see now she is telling everybody off. And then we've got her daughter Babs who is quite happily munching away um, on the ropes. And Babs is also six years old and she has had babies here in the past before, um, but unfortunately we've only got one this year. So she is also a very good mum to babies as well. So we tell our ringtails apart by their faces and they all do look different. Um, but no they don't. They do, they all do, <laughs> they look different. <laughs> they all stick out like a sore thumb to me. And then we've got Molly. Molly is one of the older ones, she's just down here next to Alex. Um, she is 12 years old. And she did used to be dominant, but um, Leah took over from her. And um, we're glad because if we didn't feed Molly fast enough, we'd get a nice nip on the back of the leg. And that hurts. And last but not least is Lulu, who's just down here. So Lulu is the oldest in the troop. She is 22 years old which is very, very good for these guys because they only live to 25 in captivity. But there has been one recorded to live up to 33 years old. So we do have hope that she lives a nice long life. So a cool fact about these guys is that their tails are exactly 26 stripes long. That's 13 white, black rings. Read my words now. <laughs> and their tail will stay that length during their lifetime. And these guys, are do have some adaptations that other primates don't. So they have two tongues, and they have a really, really small tongue that's made of cartilage that sits underneath their other tongue. And that tongue is used for grooming. Whereas their other tongue, which is the ones that you can probably see when they poke it out their mouth when they're eating, that's just the normal tongue that they would use to eat and just like pick up scents and lick the others like they do. Got some onion. There you go. So Alex is the lowest ranking member in here, but he does have his way with the ladies. The ladies do love him, but at the same time they also hate him. So if he goes to, uh, too close to the ladies, they will tell him off, but then you will see them sitting and trying to make up for it as well. So these guys are known as persimians, which means they're not actually a primate. They're actually classed as a mammal, but they come under the primate family. And that's the same with all lemurs. All lemurs are prosimians. And these guys are 
was one of the first primates to walk the earth so they've been around for a very very long time and the only island in the world you can find these guys is in Madagascar um, where they're native you won't find them anywhere around the world they love the nice tropical weather over there and they love to live in trees away from all the predators so they can't find them and get eaten so a common predator for these is the fossa the fossa come in <laughs> they're like yeah right <laughs> no reaction nope none <laughs> Um, so the fossa are one of the reasons why that these guys are endangered. Sorry, that bounced off your tail. Um, and another reason is human interference. So humans for many, many years have gone into Madagascar and cut down the forest and turned it into agricultural purposes. So like logging factories and just places that they can cut down trees and turn them into paper. Um, which means these guys do get separated from the troop and they're more exposed to predators and hunting as well because these guys are hunted for their meat but I can tell you now that's not all meat that is all fur they do have a very thin layer of uh, meat underneath their skin and that is black just to help with absorbing UV rays from the sun because they like to keep nice and warm but it is not all doom and gloom for the lemur population. Um, there is more numbers in captivity than there is in the wild. And they are doing very, very well. And one day we'll bring them back from endangerment. Because I would not like to see these cute little faces leave the earth. No. So we've got a few questions for you. Okay. So I've been trying to keep um, track of them. Yeah. Um, if you've got any other questions or missed something that you've said earlier, um, please do let me know. Um, so we've had some people say um, if they are um, sort of got f dominant females, why is it not just the dominant female who breeds? So um, do all the females breed? So yeah, all of our females do breed. Um, the only female that isn't breeding at the minute is Flo, mainly because she's too young. Um, but around uh, breeding season, they do allow the male to become a little bit dominant and breed with them. And then after breeding season, that's it. His job is done and they have nothing to do with him. Cool. Um, and what was the other question? So what are they eating? Um, so they're eating a mixture of cauliflower, pepper, onion and carrot. Some of their favourites. They've also got a little bit of parsnip as well. Um, these guys mainly like carrot because it's very high in sugar. And they like the sweet taste it gives off when they eat it. Cool. We've only got one baby at the moment. Is anyone else is pregnant or is it just going to be the one this year? Um, as far as we know, it's just the one this year. Um, it is over for breeding season. Um. So we've just got a vehicle coming past. Sorry about that. <laughs> They're moving the muck around. <laughs> right, so um, Ryan wanted to know who is the oldest lemur and how old is that one? The oldest lemur is Lulu and she's 22 years old. Which one's that? Lulu is... She's about 12 years old. She's just this one here, holding on to the rake. Cool. So no, so they can have twins as well. Um, so we've had quite a lot of twins here in the past, um, but this year we've just got the one. Um, what's that? Do you know their gestation period? Um, it's roughly. Hello, Josh. Uh, I'm gonna say because it changes for each female. It's roughly a month to two months long. Cool. Um, depending when they conceived. Cool. Um, they don't dance, but they do love to sunbathe. Yes, they love to sunbathe. They love sunbathing. Um, what sort of bad habits have some of these got? <laughs> so, uh, Flo has a very bad habit with our shoelaces. She will kind of tangle herself up in them, and she does like to eat them. 
as well. So shoelace, so we've got a shoelace thief. Yeah, we do have a shoelace thief. We do have a few in here that likes to lick shoes, so when we go in there they're just quite happily sat licking our shoes. And we do have one that is known to steal from people as well, so that is Molly. Molly will quite happily go up to people's pockets and just rummage through them and help herself to any food that they have. Cool. <laughs> so we've got a thief as well. Yeah. So someone asked who is the youngest lemur and that is this tiny little baby here. It was just born a few weeks ago. Um, so I, do they know their own individual names if you call them by name? Um, they do, but these guys are quite stubborn so if we call them they won't answer. Um, usually they'll only answer us if we have food for them. Um, but every other time they just look at you and like, yeah, whatever. They're very chilled out, these guys. So, um, so they can get to, I think we were told a minute ago, 25 years old, roughly. Um, the oldest one recorded was 33? Yeah. 33. Yeah. Um, and how do we tell them apart? So they apparently, <laughs> apparently they've all got different faces. They have. I think lemurs all look the same. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> but no, um, our keepers, they do a really good job with these. Um, so it usually takes them a few weeks to get into it. Um, but once they do know, they can tell them apart, um, which I think is absolutely brilliant. Um, like I said, for me, because I don't work with them personally, um, when I see um, when I see Lima, I see a Lima. I don't see all the individuals. Um, so you got hello from Esme and Leighton. The baby doesn't have a name yet, um, so it's still very young. We don't even know what uh, sex the baby is yet. No, we just call it baby. So we just call it baby at the moment. <laughs> have you got a favourite lemur? I do. My favourite lemur is uh, Babs. She has a great personality. Where's Babs? So apparently this is Jess's favourite lemur. So this she is Babs. a great personality. She's very, very sassy. She doesn't let everybody get away with stuff. She will, will quite happily go up to them and just push them away and be like, I don't care. <laughs> and she is a very laid back and chilled Lima. So that's our most chilled out Lima. Um, so when we are open to the public, we this is a walkthrough enclosure, that's right. So yeah, if once we're open again, um, you can um, walk in there with them. So these are the only Lemas that we've got at the park. And they come from Madagascar. And um, they do absolutely fine in our climate. Um, so we've they've got an indoor housing which um, they spend their nights in this time of year. Um, but during the day, even in the snow, they pop outside now and again. Um, it is too cold for them then to be outside all the time. Um, so they do have heating in their indoor area. And also, just because they need a little bit of extra help during the winter times, um, we have a specialist UV lighting system in there as well. So that if they decide not to um, be outdoors and um, they still get their nice UV rays which is always good for them. Hi Noah, hopefully seeing them here and seeing them up close is a nice substitute for now and then once we're back open we'll help you rebook a new date. Right, can we show you the baby again? I thought this was going to turn into a baby show and tell. <laughs> <laughs> so and what's the, who's the mum again sorry? Mink. So minx is the mum. So the length of their tail does all vary a little bit depending on the um, size of the animal. Um, but they do, was it 26? Yeah, 26. Their tail always has 26 rings on it. So 13 of each colour, 13 black and 13 white. Hi, Leah. So there we got Minx with her little baby. So she's covering it up at the moment. No, so we do, um, we look at our um, animals quite closely, especially with the chimpanzees. They're always a really good way um, to gauge what is happening with the animals in the park. Um, so daily, and we have done this for seven months now anyway, um, we do a behavioural chart for them. Um, just to make sure that they're not doing anything sort of that might be considered unusual. Uh, it gives a good way to keep an eye on their health. Um, and in the charts this month, um, I'm still going through some of the data, uh, so for last month, um, but it doesn't look like 
at the moment it's affected them too much um, which is a good thing because it shows that actually when we are busy um, the animals are just as relaxed as they are now and um, the only thing that does um, make them feel a little bit different is that obviously where we are working with a slightly smaller team at the moment um, their routine has changed a little bit um, but other than that um, they're, they're coping quite well with that as well so with a lot of these really specialist feeds um, at the moment they are still producing food um, luckily we have actually got a fairly good um, level of those feeds in um, so that's for things like the primate feeds um, with some of the more common um, feeds um, with like, like for example uh, the pig food um, rabbit food things like that we don't keep as much in stock um, but we have been getting a few bags of those sorts of bits donated which has been really nice um, our Amazon wish list um, has been really well received um, we'll say big 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 thank you to everyone who's supporting us we really really appreciate it. That's what, was it 20th of March she was born? Yeah, 20th. yeah 20th of March So their eyes, um, I'm not exactly sure exactly why um, they've got those colours, um, but they have got very, very well adapted eyes um, for being able to see at night as well. It's partly why their eyes are orange. So I've just been told that's part of what it is, so that's part of the adaptation for, um, for their sort of night vision. Yeah. Yeah, so they all have those sort of nice brownie orangey eyes. What's their favourite foods? Probably um, something they're not meant to have, isn't it? <laughs> their favourite food is onion. Um, they very rarely get onion because um, we mainly give it to like the chimps and everything. But when they have it, they absolutely love it. They go crazy for it. And then all you can smell for the rest of the day is onion because their hands and their mouth smells of it. <laughs> so apparently onion. They love some onion. Who'd have thought? <laughs> I know, because you have a tray. So there's, I mean, there's been a few um, reports, especially a lot of you, I think, are referring to um, the report that came out, uh, the story that came out last night. Um, about the tiger over in Bronx Zoo. Um, so we are always monitoring those sorts of articles and situations very closely. Um, as I've said a few times before as well, we are, especially with our primates, um, we do, uh, we work really carefully with them. Um, that's, for example, why I'm on the outside of the enclosure. Um, so with the keepers, um, so as you can see, we've got a nice bit of distance between us. Um, with the keepers, we are... Um, the primate keepers, they've got their own kitchen now, their own break room, um, because primates, if it were to jump across the other species, would probably be one of the more susceptible animals. Um, but yeah, it's, we're always monitoring these things. Um, it's always a worry, um, but we, we can only do what we're doing. Um, so we're always trying to keep everyone as sort of hygienic and clean as possible. So which is nothing new for our keepers, so it's, it's, it's just part of what they do anyway. Um, part of what they do is biosecurity, so making sure that they're always clean, that when they're going into different enclosures that they clean things like their shoes and their, um, their hands. Um, so it's all stuff that they're already doing anyway. But yeah, we're, we're, we're um, following that story just like you are. Um, so I can't sort of comment too much about it at the moment, but it's like we've, like I said, we've been looking after, especially our primates, um, very carefully right from the start. Um, so it affects things like the training and the hands-on aspect. Yeah, so they're very, very vocal animals. Um, lemurs have some of the most complex um, communication systems um, of quite a lot of the um, mammals.
Right, so I've got to um, pop back to the reptile house like I did yesterday as well because uh, we need to check some um, electrics down there um, in one of the crocodile enclosures. So it's never a dull moment here. <laughs> um, so what I'm going to do is I will leave you to it. Um, if you have any other questions, please do let us know. Put them in the comments below. And what I'll do is um, once I get back up um, from the reptile house, I will have a quick look at those um, and see what you're all up to. Hope you're all keeping safe, keeping happy. And um, yeah, we'll see you again soon. I think I've got a tour with you tomorrow. So have a think about what you want to see. Put those comments down below as well. Um, so let me know what you want to see tomorrow and I will do my best um, to go see as much of the park as we can. So see you all tomorrow. Thank you, bye. Bye. <laughs>